Showtime is really cool. And they have a new show called I'm Dying Up Here, which airs on Sundays at 10, 9 central. So please check it out. Our next comedian coming to the stage has a new comedy uh, album out called Blonde Logic. And you've seen her at Gotham Live. Please put your hands together for Kendra Cunningham. Let's hear it for Becca. Uh, this is so nice, you know? There's, uh, there's like three, three females on this show. That's good. Uh, most of the times I go to these shows, I'm the only girl, you know? And it's gone to the point that every time I go to a show, my mother's like, are you gonna be the only girl? And I'm like, yeah, and she's like, well, for Christ's sake, be careful. And I'm like, be careful. Like, when's the last time you saw a headline, female comic lured into gangbang uh, with promise of stage time? You know, it, it just doesn't happen. She's like, make all the jokes you want. Those male comics, they drink, they do drugs. It makes them very horny. I'm like, mom, get to know me. You're not scaring me. You're enticing me now. Uh, now I want to go to the show. You couldn't keep me home if you tried. Um, I'm from, is anyone else here from Mass? No, all right. No, I, I, I know that uh, Josh was from, from Mass. I, I, I've been in, I, I'm from there, but I, I've been in New York for 10 years. Um, and my mom, thanks, my mother's back in Boston. I wish I could say that I miss my mother, but she doesn't really give me the opportunity to, because she calls me like 15 times a day. And the other day she tried to send me a selfie, and I got like a 10 second video of her chewing gum. <laughs> she was like, I tried to send you a selfie. I'm like, oh, I know, uh, I have the evidence. <laughs> But her new thing is she just got one of these Amazon Alexas. You know what they are? They're like the voice activated. Well, her new thing is she likes to call me and let me listen to her heckle, Alexa, you know? So she'll be like, hey, listen to this. Hey, Alexa, you're a real piece of shit, aren't you? And then you hear Alexa go, that's not very nice. And my mother's like, ah, I'll call you back. And my picture is sitting there all day roasting this poor machine. And Alexa's like, how can I return myself? I can't live like this. But I, lo I love my mother. My mother's one of these people, she's overdressed for every occasion. You know, her favorite look is like the captain of a ship. You know, she loves to wear like starch pants with a fitted blazer, some sort of gold emblem on it. She's walking around like she's in charge of something. You know, everyone at TJ Maxx thinks she's in the corporate office. You know, she's got that sort of power about her. I like going back there. There's a lot of cultural things you can do in Boston, but, but we never do any of them. Uh, we just end up running errands, you know. And my mother's new thing is she likes to take like the most convoluted route to wherever we're going. It's like, it's almost like she's trying to confuse a kidnap victim, you know. I'm like, mom, where are you going? The cleanest is right up there through the light on the right. And she's like, you can go that way. Or oh, you can take a right, go up Congress around the rotary, skip the light. I'm like, oh, always trying to beat the system. Even when the system's in your favor. I do feel bad for her. I think she's, uh, you know, she, she always, she wants me to have a baby, you know, and, and I think kids are cute, but they give me anxiety, you know? I feel like kids get to say whatever they want to me, and I can't say what I want in return, you know? Like I was out the other day, and this cute little kid got on my lap, and he said in front of all the adults, he was like, oh, you have coffee breath. And I wanted to be like, you're lucky I don't have whiskey breath. I'd be making out with your father right now. Uh, but you can't say stuff like that to kids. To keep it inside. I think my biggest thing is the whole pregnancy thing, you know? Because I'm bloated and uncomfortable on a good day. Never mind, what, two, three years? How long does it take to have a baby? A long time. I feel like if I could lay some eggs, I'd be more apt to do that, you know? Because then I could be like, hey, do me a favor, come over here and watch my eggs. And I want to go sashay around the neighborhood, see if I still got it. I have been trying to, I've been trying to take better care of myself. I, I gained 15 pounds last year. Uh, please, uh, it was my pleasure. Uh, I'd do it all again if I could. <laughs> but I knew I was gaining weight because I noticed guys checking out my beer belly, you know? And I'd be like, hey, 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 my tits are up here. You know, let's focus on the positive people, if you don't mind. But I have been doing a lot of Groupons for fitness. Uh, anyone of it? I did one at Mendez Boxing Gym. Anyone ever been there on 23rd? It's a really great workout. Uh, I got a group on. I went. They were like, oh, go get changed. And when you're ready, see the guy in the corner in the red shirt. Tell him it's your first day. So I go. I get changed. I go over him like it's my first day. And the guy's like, oh, you train him for a fight? And I was like, no, I have a group on. <laughs> and I don't know if I was more embarrassed that I had a group on 
or he thought I looked like an out of shape female boxer, you know? And I was like, either way, I'm saving money. But I have, I've been trying to, I've been trying to be positive this year. I've been doing a lot of affirmations. I don't know if you guys do the affirmations. Uh, I think they're good. I, I get brainwashed though. You know, I, I feel like people come up to me and they're like, hey Kendra, how are you? And I'm like, I love and adore myself. And they're like, oh, something's wrong with Kendra. But I do, I, I think it's mostly anxiety. You know, I'm trying to get rid of anxiety. Like even as a kid, I had anxiety, like a game of musical chairs would turn me into an NFL linebacker. Uh, but, but I had a lot of dreams, anxiety dreams as a kid, mostly abandonment. You know, I'd come home and my whole house was empty. And now I have anxiety dreams, uh, but mostly about food, you know? Like I had a dream the other day that I was eating lasagna alone in an empty restaurant. And today, I made that dream a reality. Uh, yeah. Feel the fear and do it anyway. You know what I'm saying? We gotta conquer that stuff. I, um... I've been trying to change my life around a little bit. I, for the past eight years, all I've been doing is stand-up and, and bartending. So it's like both my jokes, uh, both my jobs, I can show up half drunk with five of my friends and nobody gives a shit, you know? Um, so I've been trying to change it up. Uh, this is the thing, I like bartending. I, I think it's fun, you know? Uh, but I was getting a little cranky, you know? No one likes a cranky bartender. Like one of my last shifts, I had a guy come in and he had his money fanned out in his hand. He was like, I have $7, what should I get? I was like, I don't know, a job? Uh, some financial planning advice, perhaps? Go buy a banana and make a phone call. I can't help you here. I'm making my living dollar by dollar. And then they had the guys, you know, you ever seen these guys, they, they put their tips into little origami things. Like they make like tulips and tuxedo shirts. It takes them like 20 minutes to give you one buck. You know, I'm like, hey, get your prison yards, arts and crafts off the bar, you know? What am I supposed to do with that? I go into Dunkin' Donuts the next day, they're like, oh, that's $3. I'm like, here's two tulips and a tuxedo shirt. Do you accept this mockery of our currency? Because this is how I get paid at four o'clock in the morning. The worst is the, the Susan B. Anthony coin. I had one guy, he used to bring me in Susan B. Anthony coins to tell me, oh, I went and changed my, I changed a $20 bill into Susan B. Anthony coins. So I could give you, so you'd remember me. I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, I'll remember you being a pain in the ass, is really. Because Susan B. Anthony Coins is like the STD of tips. You know what I mean? You wake up the next day, you're like, I don't want anyone to know I have this. Uh, uh, how am I going to get rid of it? Uh, and who the fuck was that guy anyway? You know? That's the way it all goes down. I'm happy to be taking a break from bartending because I'm, I'm trying not to drink. Uh, and uh, as an Irish Catholic, that means I'm not drinking in public, uh, just at home. But, but I have been also trying to change my eating habits, because I've been working out, but I don't change my eating habits, so it's almost like I'm working out just to maintain chubby, you know what I mean? Uh, and, and I recently switched over to uh, bran muffins. Not my first choice. Uh, I wouldn't bother, you know? I feel like bran muffins' a slogan should be like, hey, if you love muffins, uh, but you don't love yourself enough to enjoy one. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then to really sum it all up. <laughs> anyway, I have been thinking. Lately I've been thinking about, I might want to get married. You know, I've never been married. And it's not like I'm looking at wedding dresses or venues or anything. It's just like when I fill out legal forms, it says like married or single, and I check off single, and then I write in, but I can explain, you know? <laughs> and I feel like that's a sign of something. But all my friends back home, they used to help me. You know, ten, they got married 10 years ago. That was one of the reasons I left, you know. Uh, the guy I was with was like, hey, whenever you want to get married, just say the word. And I had no idea what the word was, but uh, I was petrified, I might say, it by accident. So I got the hell out of there. That was 10 years ago. I've been in the same apartment in Brooklyn for 10 years. That's a long time, don't you think? I feel like when they show other apartments in my building now, they walk by my door like she's been here for 10 years. Try to keep the noise down. But there's always a couple across the hall from me, like one couple moves out, another couple moves in, and I'm always alone. Uh, so I always try to sort of like justify being single by critiquing the couple across the hall, you know? And, uh, and the new couple that moved in, they have a pretty nice life. They cook bacon like five times a week, you know? <laughs> It's like Monday night, Tuesday morning. It's, it's like they're running an underground breakfast joint over there, you know? And then they have really loud sex. 
it's like the life I want is right across the hall. You know, they've never invited me over. <laughs> Two parties they've had and, haven't, ha and never invited me. You know, I think that's a shame. I I'm good at a party. Uh, I'm wondering how long it's gonna take them to realize that every time they have a party and don't invite me, one of their FedEx packages disappears. <laughs> like, am I gonna have to point that out to these people? Anyway, I, I, I have, uh, this is the thing, I, I like men, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm not a man hater. I, I feel like if men were pets, I would have one. Uh, I might even have two or three of them, you know? I feel like I'm, I'm the type of woman who would move to the country so my men would have more room to run around, you know? I'm selfless like that. Uh, I just think guys can be stupid, you know? I had a guy come up to me after a show and he was like, I'm really into thick chicks. And I was like, oh, too bad I'm not into honest guys. Because we would have had a really nice relationship ahead of us, you and I. It's, you don't know when you're involved with someone stupid, though, you know? I mean, as kids, you knew they were in a special class or, or they had a crusty nose, you know? They had a stupid tell. Uh, but as an adult, you can be involved with someone for six, seven months before you're like, oh, you're an imbecile. That's why we're having so many problems. So from now on, on the first date, I'm like, I want to see a sixth grade report card, okay? Because stupid starts early. It doesn't get much better from there. I, uh, I actually have been dating someone. I went on the apps. Anyone do the app thing? I, I wasn't doing very well. I, I was being very honest. You know, I would say, lonely control freak, uh, seeks man a few words uh, for a romantic game, as Simon says, you know? And uh, I wasn't getting very far, but, but I did meet one guy really nice and uh, and he smokes pot which is nice to be with a guy who has his own weed you know i feel like it's the closest i've come to a, a dual income relationship uh with me and him but um it's mostly for the sex i mean I, i'll say this i'm a horny girl but but i'm not promiscuous you know i i don't even like to have sex with the lights on i'm like hey if you want me you can grope around and find me you know <laughs> Uh, I'll be in the second closet to the left with every item of clothing I have on. But I know I'm getting a little cuckoo because I was on the subway the other day, rush hour. Everyone's packed in there like sardines. A couple next to me making out. I could have touched them if I wanted to. 5.30 in the afternoon, they're rubbing each other up and down, grabbing each other's buttocks. Uh, finally, I tapped the girl on the shoulder. I was like, hey, hey, hey. I'll take it from here. Uh, I like where you're going with this, but... I see a different ending. <laughs> I do. Well, my plan was, uh, I, I thought I was going to get very, this summer was going to be my summer to like be at my wit's end, you know? I don't know, maybe it'll still happen. But my plan was this summer, if I didn't have a man, a steady guy, I was going to go out drinking alone with a low-cut shirt and a big dildo up between my tits. <laughs> and I was going to walk around going, hey, this could be you. <laughs> This could be you. You guys have been fun. My name's Kendra Cunningham. Enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs>